You know, I took two years in the United States just try to learn more about the fibromyalgia. Therefore, um, my participation, uh, my participants, you know, include two groups. One is in the United States and the other one is from my own country. I want to compare what's differences in between two groups. <coughs> okay. Um, I think not many people are familiar with the fibromyalgia, so I would like to define, you know, what is fibromyalgia? Actually, it's a common and complex chronic pain disorder um, fluctuating with um, muscular uh, skeletal pain. So actually, you know, they, they have the whole body aches all over the body. And it's very difficult to diagnose because the lab data is normal. So um, we don't have the um, objective um, data. So therefore, we have to base on the patient's uh, descriptions. But the only um, diagnosis criteria uh, is from the ACR, American College of Re Rheumatology, uh, at 1990. <coughs> And uh, uh, it says uh, widespread pain for at least three months. And uh, there are 18 points, uh, eight, um, total uh, 18 points. But out of the 18, you know, if you have 11 points, and we press our uh, thumbs, you press like, very hard, like there's a half pair, then it equals like a four kilograms, uh, kilo, um, yeah. kilograms, yes. So um, I just like to show, you know, uh, there are 18 points. Actually, it's, you know, I, uh, nine points symmetry for left side and the right side. Okay. So at and it's very difficult, even in the United States, it's very difficult for physicians to diagnose. So at uh, in 19 uh, uh, in 2010. Uh, they uh, revised the uh, diagnosis criteria. So this is a new criteria. Uh, we based on the spread pain index uh, as a WPI and the symptom severity score, SS. So we have the, uh, two criteria, you know, if WPI greater than seven and SS score uh, greater or equal five, then we can diagnose as uh, fibromyalgia. Or the second one is WPI three to uh, six points and the SS scores equal or greater than nine, then they can be diagnosed as fibromyalgia. Because just like I said earlier, uh, the lab data is normal for these persons. So this is the new criteria for physicians to diagnose as a fibromyalgia. And uh, in addition to the pain, most common symptoms they have is chronic pain, you know, at least three months. And uh, most of them, they have fatigue. And, you know, it, it's a non-restorative uh, fatigue. So, you know, like, uh, um, I interview many patients, uh, both in Taiwan and the United States, and they explain, you know, uh, they, you know, even in the morning, you know, they cannot get up, you know, from the bed to do anything, because they they were just very tired to do anything, and because of the pain of the whole entire body, so uh, they can cannot sleep very well. So they also have insomnia problems. And the other thing is because um, they have a morning stiffness all the time. So sometimes uh, it's confused with uh, uh, arthritis. And the other thing is they have uh, fibro uh, fog. And what is fibro fog? It's <coughs> cognitive problems. They have difficulty in memorizing uh, the things. And uh, uh, they also have um, anxious and depressed because it's very difficult for them to be diagnosed. So usually um, in America or even in Taiwan, 
uh, it takes like uh, at least five years to be diagnosed. And many, many times, physicians, they don't believe they have a uh, disease. So many, many times, they were transferred to uh, psychiatry. So um, even in Taiwan and the United States, uh, these people, they really suffered. So uh, one of the patients I interviewed in the United States, you know, she cannot wake up. I have to visit uh, at her home, and she just lay down in the bed. But you know, since she, she knew that you know, I was going to bring uh, all the information regarding the fibro, uh, fibromyalgia you know, to, to my home, so she was very willing you know, for me to interview her. And by the time I got there, you know, she has um, caregiver. But it is a government uh, provided the caregiver for her because she uh, she has um, uh, severity um, for uh, from the government. You know, she got a, a, um, uh, the pension. Uh, uh, no, it's a disability insurance. So she got like a one thousand U.S. dollars per month because she cannot work due to her disease. Okay, and since the cause is unknown, the, all the lab data is normal. So um, we have uh, many um, theories about this disease. So I just um, you know, show the possibility of the etiology. The first one, you know, most of the physicians, they would like to you know, convince the people it's about the central nervous system sensitization. And uh, the other theory is about the new role about chemical abnormality. So these people, these uh, patients, uh, their uh, serotonin or substance, uh, serotonin is low compared to normal people, and the substance P is high. And the hormone imbalance theory is as uh, HPA axis is low and growth uh, hormone is low uh, as well. And sleep abnormality um, uh, because they are at stage four sleep disorder. And psychological <coughs> behavioral factors, they have lower pain threshold. And as far as for uh, genetic factors, um, they think about serotonin or dopamine relative genes. Uh, disinfection, uh, uh, dis <coughs> dysfunction, yes. And the last one is the physical and emotional trauma. And these people, you know, when I interview them, or according to the literature review, uh, they've been, uh, you know, suffer from the sexual abuse, car accidents, surgeries before they were diagnosed as fibromyalgia. So uh, one of my uh, clients in the United States, you know, uh, she said uh, before she was she got diagnosed, she was, um, you know, uh, sexual abuse. <coughs> and one of my uh, uh, clients in um, my country, you know, she had a car accident, and then right after, you know, she got diagnosed as a uh, fibromyalgia because you know her whole body aches and. Uh, no uh, lab data, you know, convinced that she had a disease. So currently, uh, in United States, uh, there are three medications uh, for uh, fibromyalgia, and uh, the first one is the pregabalin, duloxetine, and melnosoprine. Uh, uh, and in my country, we have only Lyrica, the first one, and it was approved for my country. Okay, these people, they can only get a release from the medication as 30 to 50%. Currently, even in the United States, you know, only 30 to 50%, you know, can be released by medication. So these people, they have to do, you know, the, the non-pharmacological treatments such as exercise. But it has to be graded exercise. They cannot work very rigorously because they are tired 
they all they have pain all the time. So it has to be graded. So usually we have, you know, we give them the uh, exercise prescription. So the graded exercise such as yoga, tai chi, Chinese, you know, qigong, or water aerobics, walking, you know. I spend a lot of time in the United States just trying to learn the all non-pharmacological treatment since our background is from nursing. Okay, there's another, you know, uh, treatment, you know, non-pharmacological treatment is a CAM, you know, <laughs> complementary and alternative management. Actually, in, even in the United States, you know, there are more than 90% of the fibromyalgia that they experienced uh, all these, you know, like uh, acupuncture, chiropractic care, massage therapies. It would be more convenient to access in my country because we are Chinese, you know, just I like, you know, I show from the my, you know, PowerPoint, you know, those uh, non-pharmacological treatments, you know, we all experience in my country, and it's very common to get it. And also, and the literature review showed, you know, the uh, cognitive and behavior therapy, you know, would be a benefit for uh, these patients. So my study um, purpose are, you know, ex explore the Taiwanese and American fibromyalgia's living impact in three dimensions, functions, over impacts, and symptoms, and uh, their uh, qualitative life experience as well. So my methodology would be triangulation, both in qualitative and quantitative. Um, qualitative would be a uh, semi-structured uh, interview guide uh, with a constant comparative method. And qual uh, quantitative, you know, I use the FIQR. Uh, this questionnaire actually uh, was developed by a professor, Dr. Robert Bennett from uh, Oregon. OHSU University, and he is um, um, a rheumatologist and very well-known professor as well. So I spent two years with him just try to study the fibromyalgia, and FIQR actually is his questionnaire, and I just transfer into Chinese for my um, uh, people in Taiwan. And this is the results, you know, you can compare, you know, the differences uh, from USA and the Taiwan, um, their age. You know, the, the one I mark is the red, that's the most difference I would like to, uh, to talk about. You know, in USA, uh, uh, they have 72, uh, 72 percent overweight. And in my country, you know, I think, you know, because of the food, I think. Yeah, and the duration, you know, because in my country, uh, it is a new disease for all of us. So uh, before I interview my clients, they were not diagnosed before. So um, for American people, you know, um, you see the first time diagnosed, you know, for my, this uh, group, it's actually over five years, and it's 13 years quite long. And uh, um, not many people, they work full time in US because um, they cannot suffer the illness, the pain and the insomnia, sort of. So um, from the demographic data, um, you see the difference, you know, the BMI, education and the uh, uh, full-time, part-time and this is the FIQR scores. The most different uh, is the cleaning floor. I think it's not uh, used. I, I think I, we, we have to revise the questionnaire because uh, in America they have to you know use the vacant to clean the, the carpet. But in my country, most of the 
car, you know, the family, they, we don't have a, uh, the carpet, you know, because the, the vacant machine is very heavy. And the total functions uh, overall for the score actually is, the, you know, the United States and the Taiwan is the, the same. And uh, the F FIQR symptoms, you know, you see the difference. You know, I, you know, the difference is because, you know, in my country, you know, we don't have many access uh, resources uh, regarding the uh, fibromyalgia. So you can see, you know, the, fi the, the findings, you know, most of the people we are in the psychological problems because we don't get any support from family or physicians or the friends. Okay, that's the uh, total score. You know, the USA is you know greater than the Taiwan. Um, okay, uh, as far as the qualitative data, because it's a very big data, so I just like to you know see you know the differences and the the uh, the in, you know the the themes in common. So actually, you know, from the cycle in in the center. Uh, like a physical, physical or mental distorture um, is the same, you know, in both countries. Uh, but the different differences in Taiwan and the United States is because um, we don't have any access information or the website or support group. So uh, most of the people in my country, you know, they suffer a lot. And uh, in the United States, you can see they have a lot of access. In, uh, uh, in information about the disease. So this is a comparison of the USA and the Taiwan in more detail in the uh, sub things, you know. You can just take a look because of the time is always running up. <laughs> yeah. So I spent a lot of time, you know, um, trying to interview the physicians, um, um, and a lot of uh, healthcare professionals. So I came up with uh, these uh, structures, you know, for my country, you know, to suggest, uh, suggest the government, you know, how we can provide more information or get from they, you know, from, get grants from the government to do more research to help all these people. Thank you. Thank you.